Hello? My name is Jacob Closey. I'm Michael Jacala. Tomasz Hulka. And we are studying the Space Shuttle Challenger disaster. Okay, okay. Up until the beginning of 1986, the Space Shuttle Challenger had launched nine successful times. On January 28, 1986, however, the Space Shuttle Challenger tragedy happened. A Space Shuttle launch was a failure at the Kennedy Space Center at Cape Carnival as the conditions to launch were not suitable. The shuttle launched up and just 73 seconds into launch, the shuttle was toast and exploded, causing death of all seven crew STS-51L members. In this picture, the front row people names go as follows Michael J. Smith Dick Scooby Ronald McNair Ellison Onizuka Krista McAuliffe Gregory Jarvis and Judith Resnick Krista McAuliffe was supposed to be the first teacher in space as it was planned that she would teach two lessons while in space along with other research the reason the shuttle crashed was due to two rubber o-rings failing due to cold temperatures the day before the launch Either way, the flight was delayed six days because of extreme weather conditions, yet still the weather that morning was cold and unsuitable for launch. The morning of January 28th was very cold and engineers warned the superiors, warned the superiors were bound to fail, such as the o rubber O-rings when temperatures were that low. Nonetheless, the information was unheated and the Challenger launched at 11.39 a.m. Here's a video of the tragedy. The rubber o-rings around the tower were too cold and when the shuttle launched, fuel began to leak out, causing the explosion. There was a groove which the o-ring, both the primary and the secondary o-rings, fit in those grooves. Uh, and there was a little flange and tang that, that they came together and the, the, in order to stop the gas from, from going around and, and escaping, when the initial uh, bit of gas hit the first primary o-ring, that pressure would push the o-ring into the little space between the, the flange and the tang and that would make the seal. In other words, the O-ring was not in a sealing configuration when it was just sitting statically on the launch pad. It has to move dynamically at the moment of ignition to be able to make the seal. And the requirement for it to move quickly is why it was dependent on temperature because lower temperatures, less flexibility, and not so rapid reconfiguration of the O-ring. Some immediate effects of the, of the disaster are that NASA was questioned on their ethics. It brought some cultural problems to NASA as well, such as failure to voice all problems to the launch decision team. NASA was forced to make many technical changes in order to change the culture of its workforce. NASA was simply careless in its safety procedures and should have checked the rubber O-rings to make sure they were still able to withhold the gases and fuel within the space shuttle. A long-term issue of the disaster is that ever since it happened, it changed the space shuttle program completely. Plans to fly other astronauts into space were paused for a whopping 22 years up until Barbara Morgan flew aboard in 2007. Also, any crew members working on satellites in space were taken off duty for a while. Finally, every January, NASA pauses to remember the Challenger's last crew and other crews lost in pursuing space travel. The stakeholders in the event are the crew members and their families, Morton Theocle, NASA and taxpayers, Alan McDonald, the main engineer responsible for building the rocket boosters on the shuttle. He knew the shuttle was at fault and tried explaining to NASA that the conditions were not suitable for launch, but NASA disregarded his words. Things to, pre to prevent the disaster is obviously the engineer should have made it clear to NASA that the launch would not be safe at all. He needed to stress that the launch would end up in failure. 
Another precaution that should have been taken was that the engineers should have checked weeks in advance whether or not the boosters were in good shape. Although the engineers at Morn Theocold told NASA the launch was unsafe, NASA needed more proof as to why the shuttle was not safe for launch. At this point, the engineers realized they needed to make a management decision instead of a safety or ethical one. They realized their reward for this project was in jeopardy if the launch was cancelled. Very unethical of both parties. NASA broke one of the fundamental canons in the Code of Ethics for Engineers. They did not hold paramount the safety, health, and welfare of the public. There was a monument built in Arlington National Cemetery in remembrance of those who lost their lives on that tragic day.